I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, he just kind of nullifies one unit. That doesn't look that good. And then look at what happens. The balloon turns away and he turns into a freaking meteorite. <laughs> Hello everybody, Grease Duel please, and we're back with more Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, no time for BS. Check out some of these new units they got going on. This is called, like, the Pirate Harpoon Guys, sort of. <laughs> they mentioned that they made a harpoon using pirate, kinda. Uh, and I don't know what he is doing to these red men, but it is absolutely hilarious. I think that's some of, I don't know if you call this a glitch or whatever, I almost would prefer the weapon to do this rather than do whatever it's supposed to do. It's hilarious. It's turning these red guys into Laffy Taffy or something. It's just amazing. Watch this hit right here. This is so funny. Goes into this guy. His head goes blasting off of his body, and then it just gets yanked forward. It takes his own club out of his hand. It's like some sort of, like, 1980s horror freaking special effects going on <laughs> here. So... They can make whatever kind of units they want. I love it all. This is so random. This this single guy has now destroyed all of the... Uh, I think these are, what are they, barbarians or something like that? These little club users? In the most amazing way I could have foreseen. There's just... Look at the bodies laying on the ground. This twisted pile of, like, spaghetti-like bodies. It's hilarious. Now, there's another unit that they, came, that they showed uh, recently as well right here called Sticky Hands Balloon Man, I think it is. I don't know, the name is so random. But what he does, he kind of wanders around aimlessly until, boop, he goes ahead and gives you a little love tap on the ass right there. Then it's like a balloon just pops out of his backpack. He raises up, and I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, he just kind of nullifies one unit. That doesn't look that good. And then look at what happens. The balloon turns away, and he turns into a freaking meteorite and hits the ground. What I really would have loved to see is like this happened in the midst of like a ton of units just for the just for the the demo of this because I'm really curious how much damage that that comet does when it strikes the ground it's it's pretty funny though they need to keep coming up with stuff like this this is just absolutely it's it's gold it's pure gold so a couple of people had said that the muskets versus the beamers in my last video wasn't really an accurate representation because an anti-gravity cube like ended up getting in the way of the beamers. Um, yeah, that's true, but the issue is is that for the most part, when it comes down to the cost, the muskets are just strat like flat out better than the beamers in a close range fight. I'm gonna show you guys right now, just real quick. This is just gonna be a one-on-one. -on -one. And you're going to see that because the musket is going to get the shot off first, he'll completely miss like an asshole. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's try that one more time. Oh, wow. This is the the worst showing from both. Can you believe this? They both What is going on here? Hold on. I need to see something real quick. Come you gotta be shitting me. I've broken the game. Neither unit can hit one another. Oh my god. Okay, hold on. So that's- I don't know what happened there. Something weird happened. Okay, let me- let me try- there let me put maybe if I do this it'll be better what I was trying to say before the units could not hit one another from freaking 10 feet what is this <laughs> okay fuck it maybe the muskets are just bad <laughs> there we go okay so what I was gonna try and say was that the muskets always get the first volley off, so they usually end up winning for that reason. But it looks like if they miss, it's it just like I don't know what I don't know what the the potential for missing is in this game, like what the percentage is to hit. Because that was absolutely atrocious. Let's go crazy here real quick though, because that'll like change the percentage a little bit from like just being pure luck to being a little bit of mixture of luck and firepower. So we'll do. 16 of those guys, 16 of these guys, and now let's see who's going to take this away, the muskets or the beamers. If I had to guess, I'm going to go ahead and say the muskets, because right here, the muskets are going to get that first volley off, and you can see, I think, four men went down. Now, it really depends on how well the beamers do on their volley. They did pretty damn good. Uh, I'm not going to lie. In fact, they wrecked. They wrecked all kinds of people. Oh, wow. So anyway, I think that the beamers are better than the muskets, but they're not like 500 compared to, what is it, 80 better? Um, let's go try some other things, though. People had said that they wanted to see 
Donald Trump versus the Dark Peasant? Man, I don't know, man. I have a feeling that the Dark Peasant is gonna win this, but what we'll do is we'll try and, like, split up the Trumps as much as possible. Maybe that'll kind of, like, this way the Dark Peasant won't be able to draw, to draw them all in at once. Let's put, like, one over here, one over here. This is gonna be tough no matter what. There's gonna be, like, rocks and shit all up in the way. There we go. Alright, let's give it a shot. Now, the big issue is that you're gonna notice no knockback with the rifles anymore. Now the rifles just do damage, and a couple people had said, you know, put the M16 guy up against the up against the Dark Peasant in a fair fight. Well, there is no fair fight. Because the, the Dark Peasant wins every time, unless you grotesquely go over the cost. Then it's possible for the M16 guy to win. But the problem is, is that because there's no knockback anymore, you're dealing with an issue where this guy can just run into anything that he comes up against and he'll just push through and suck everyone up so right here you can see donald trump trying to do his thing there's still a, one trump left alive well there was one trump left alive and he got freaking owned to high hell so let's go ahead and move the trumps out of there and i'll show you we'll, we'll do the m16 guy we'll try and split these guys up as well try and split them up maybe like that there and we'll put like another one over here and maybe another one over here uh, well, we can't even do that because that goes way over the cost of the M16 guy. But this is what I'm talking about. Look, all those bullets coming in. The freaking Dark Peasant is just pushing through it. He doesn't care at all. He's like, I don't even feel it. It's like, it's like freaking gnats. Gnats in Florida. Mosquitoes. This is nothing. I pick you up and I throw you to the ground. That's what you get right there, baby. It's like a giant merry-go-round of telekinesis. The M16 guys stand no chance. You can see... They're, because we've split up our forces, they've gotten a couple of extra hits in. But the Dark Peasant just has so many damn hit points that, I mean, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna flip and flop and flip it to do all around here. These guys are taking more shots, more shots, but in the end, they just get picked up like everything else and thrown down to the freaking ground. So that's the issue. That's why there isn't really such a thing as a fair fight between the M16 guy and the Dark Peasant. I mean, I guess we could try and just use M16 guys and see how many it takes. I don't know. Let's go, like, double the cost. If we can't do it with double the cost, I just... I'm not going to mess with it. Because once you go past double the cost, it's just not even fair anymore. Okay. So, we've got 40,000 worth compared to 20,000 worth of Dark Peasant. Dark Peasant, again, just pushing right through. Throwing people left and right. It's freaking Bedlam over here. The poor red guys. They, you know... They wake up in the morning and they're like, well, another day of losing to the Dark Peasants. Not like, not, not like, oh, they won! They did win! Okay, so double cost worked pretty good. Hold on. I wonder if we can do it with maybe like one and a half cost. Well, maybe we're pretty close. Hold on. Let's try something here. Let's go. Um, yeah, they're one and a half cost. Let's see how this does. Because we took that win last time. So maybe the M16 guys can do okay. Oh, God. The bodies have started flying, but it's okay. They're getting a lot of shots in here. A couple of dudes over there. Maybe that guy can tie up the freaking Dark Peasant. All right, well, I thought he could tie him up for a little bit, but I was completely wrong. How many men do we have left? Ah, they've kind of bunched up a little bit. That sucks. We had about seven men left, and now they're just getting tossed left and right. Ah, oh, crap. Yep, they're gone. Well, it may have been close, but it looks like right around double will get you where you need to go. Still, the Dark Peasant, a very, very formidable opponent. <laughs> He's still picking people up and throwing them. I guess a couple of guys still had some hit points left. But if they don't have the guns in their hand, there's really nothing they can do. This guy right over here was, like, holding onto his gun for dear life. He was like, you'll never take it out of my hands, my cold dead hands, you bastard. Someone wanted to see footmen versus energy swords. So old-style swords versus new-style swords. I think I'm gonna give this to the footmen. I think there's just too many footmen for the uh, for the energy swords to deal with. We'll see. I mean, let's see right here. Can they cut through more than one guy? Wow! Yeah, wow, those energy swords will cut through like two and three guys at a time over here. Holy crap! The energy swords are beating the living hell out of the footmen. Wow! So that was not even a battle. The footmen... Although they had, like, a similar cost... I mean, one footman would not have made the difference there. We could have made it 24... Or 2,500 against 2,480. It would not have mattered. The, the energy sword guys won big time there. Now, I don't know if you set your footman up a little bit differently. If you would find, like, a better... 
a better uh, formation that would work. Real quick, though, I'm kind of curious. These shield guys, they're a little bit closer in cost to the uh, to the laser guys. I don't know if it's going to really matter. Let's do right about there. Because the shields just kind of, like, jump into battle and try and knock people over. Let's see here. Here come... Look at this beautiful fight right here. Wah! I don't really think that those shields are going to do very much against laser swords. Laser swords pretty much cut through just about everything. Wow! These laser guys are, like, super worth their money. I mean, there is there any melee at the same cost that can beat the laser? Okay, now I'm actually curious because the laser swords are doing really good. Hold on here. All right, let's see if the Vikings can do it. So these are the 60 cost Vikings against these laser swords. Now these guys have axe and shield in hand. Here they come. Let's get let's get nice and low for this clash. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh! Charging right into battle and oh my god, it does not look good for the Vikings. Oh, no, it looks like they're going to meet the same fate that... It oh, right over here, they're getting a couple of kills in. Getting a couple of kills. Nope, never mind. Man, laser swords again. Holy crap. Um, I mean, we can do ninjas, but the problem is, is that if we do ninjas, they're not melee. So it's not really, like, the same. Um, but we'll do it anyway. We'll do the same cost right here. 2480 against 2480. Now, the big thing here is, I mean, they're going to get some throwing stars out, but... I don't even know if they're going to get any kills with the throwing stars. Nope. Total, total wipeout. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we can say that the laser swords, for their cost, just completely obliterate every other melee. Every other melee. There's nothing that can compare. The only thing that we haven't tried, really, I guess, is the samurai, which are 50 cost. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't foresee these guys doing any better. Um, well, the only other thing that we could try is the headbutters. So we could try that as well. Maybe the headbutters will do better. But right here, here come the samurai. Let's see if they just get cut down as well. Right there, you can see the back and forth slash, if you saw it right there, took these two samurai out with that back and forth slash. And it's just, it's just like horrible. It's just like meat through a grinder, man. There's nothing they, oh wow, one of the lightsabers went flying there. But again, you're left with... Like, it's not even close. You're left with, like, what? <laughs> like, 20 or more of these of these guys left? It's horrible. Like, I'm not even sure that the red side is getting 10 kills. Okay, I had to try it because I love these guys. It's the headbutters. You guys know it. This is one of my favorite units because they're absolutely hilarious. Let's see if maybe they can jump and get some kills before they get freaking rocket freaking destroyed by those lightsabers. Um... I don't know. Yeah, they got a couple kills in. Oh, oh, they're doing. There's a couple of guys still around, but still, the the freaking backhand chop there with those lightsabers are pulling out a clear victory. Okay, so the light the, the the energy swords are just the best for that 80 cost. There's nothing that can come up to them in the melee area. Someone had said that they wanted to see. However, they wanted to see in two energy sword masters versus a samurai master because the last time two samurai masters had beaten one energy sword user um okay so they can definitely beat him let's bring it down to one-on-one -on -one. a one-on-one -on -one fight last time well we didn't really do a one-on-one -on -one fight we did a two-on-one -on -one fight but let's take a look nope the poor samurai guy got the shit kicked out of him. He had no chance. So we did two samurai against one energy sword wielder, and the two samurai guys did win. But you know what? Let's let's increase it. Let's go samurai master. We'll do a baker's dozen of these. And then over in the neon area, we'll do, I mean, the same cost. Right there. Okay. Let's see how this does. Um, I'm kind of curious on this because... I have a feeling we're going to lose a lot of Samurais right off the bat. Oh, kind of going through the ground there. Yeah, we sure did. Um, yep, it's a total it's a total victory on the blue side. All right. So in that way, the melee... Man, the energy sword wielders have the melee on lock. Um, I don't even know if there's anything here that we can put up against that will... Well, hold on. Let's try something else. I'm kind of curious. We have a bunch of Teslas against a bunch of um, of the Viking Axemen here. 
I don't know. If the Axemen can get closed in... Oh, wow. One guy already went flying down to the ground. Another guy down to the ground. There we go. Now those axes are starting to come in. All right. Nice. So the barbarians can definitely win if... I keep on calling them barbarians. They're not barbarians. The Axemen can definitely win if they get close enough. Um, if we move them back, will it make any difference? I don't really know. Uh, let's go ahead and put them there. And to, now the, the, the range on the Teslas is not very far. Like, right? Okay, so basically where we started it at last time was the range. So it's not very good at all. One guy got taken out immediately. There goes two guys. But once they get in range, man, it is a freaking massacre. And the Axemen totally beat the shit out of the Teslas. What else can we mess around with here? Uh, Axemen versus Gravity Dudes. I'm kind of curious on this. Uh, the Gravity Dudes do do damage. So it's not just like, they, they're not, they don't just move creatures around. They do legitimately do some damage, so let's take a look here. Oh, yeah, right there. We're getting a huge pile up. You can see a couple of guys already immediately down. So the gravity dudes are doing a little bit of work here, man. I don't know if they're going to pull it off, though. Um, let's see. Oh, things are looking good for the gravity dudes. This guy over here is still shucking and jiving. Oh, it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's one-on-one -on -one right here. Who can win? Oh, I think that axe just took that guy out. That was closer than I would have thought, though. The gravity dudes did pretty damn well, everything considered. I mean, these units, the Axemen are pretty damn good when it comes to, like, their cost. And the gravity dudes uh, stood their ground, uh, considering that's not really what they're made for. Someone wanted to see some gravity dudes just against, like, an epic frick ton of peasants. Um, we're going to have to take down a lot of these gravity dudes because their cost is too high. Uh, there we go, and we can get rid of a couple of peasants to kind of make things... Somewhat similar. There we go. 1600 to 1600. Um, I don't know. I mean, I kept all the gravity dudes very close together. They're gonna- Oh, wow. The peasants' bodies, their flying bodies are are essentially their, their weapons right now. And there's a quite a- Look at this. Look at the, the, the time that it takes gravity dude to do his, I don't know, his gravity pulse again. I don't know if he's gonna get it. I don't think it's gonna happen. They're slowly just slap boxing him to, him to death. And the red mob comes in and beats down the gravity dudes. The only other thing that we could do is let's go ahead real quick and let's like stagger the gravity dudes a bit. We'll kind of like, like put them, there we go. We'll, we'll give them some space to work and see if that changes things up. Now each gravity dude is gonna get quite a few peasants right off the bat maybe do some damage that way you can see all the bodies flying oh uh, there's still really only two gravity dudes up they're just kind of slapping that seems to be their main melee attack they just like slap people whack just slap them in the face right there that was a austin powers neck chop nope no chance the the red zerg managed to win one thing i was really curious about is how well the box guns can tie people up this isn't like a really, really good battle here because there's gonna be like so much random stuff uh, like with all the chickens and everything, but I kind of wonder. Let's see what happens, man. Look at all the rings. <laughs> oh God. Oh wow, there is just, there is just boxing rings everywhere. They're getting their own men inside of boxing rings. There's so many boxing rings. Oh wow. The box it oh they're doing pretty good. Yes, the blue victory. They took the chicken man man's down. The box guns can do it. I had no idea. So I wonder, hold on. Well, I don't know, man. Well, they're gonna win. I'm pretty sure that these guys could beat one dark peasant. There's gonna be what I need to do. Oh, they can't hit him! They just they all missed! <laughs> oh, but I think he's getting stuck. I think he's getting stuck inside of uh, inside of the ring that a few a few other guys are getting. To. Oh my God! There's just there's people exploding everywhere. There's just rings everywhere. Oh, this is such a bad idea. Oh God! Oh, this is a terrible idea. Yeah, I think the dark peasant pretty much has this one. If he doesn't, there's someone probably like upside down or something, or maybe there's someone through the ground. That's not dead right now. Yeah, the Dark Peasant has it. There's got to be someone in the ground or something random over here. Oh, wow. He is... Oh, there's a couple of guys upside down. Okay. So, Dark Peasant takes that one there. But let's mess around with something else. There we go. I kind of made like a ring of box guns this time. 
So let's see if they're not all hitting one another, if they can actually hit him. No, they missed every single time. So, whoa! I don't know what happened there. I just saw bodies, like, I don't even know what happened. The bodies were, like, glitching crazily. Oh, there we go. I think we've got, yep, we got a ring right there. Oh, he flies right through the ring. He doesn't even give a shit about the rings. Okay, so that's why they have no chance against the dark peasant. He just, he just flies right through the rings. Eh, all right, fair enough. I'm kind of curious. Look at this giant overcost blob of super boxers we have. They're made for boxing rings, aren't they? Let's see what happens here. Um, a couple of guys got locked up, but it looks like quite a few of them made it through. Um, and once they make it through, I imagine they're just gonna, like, totally wreck the box guns. Oh, a couple more guys are flying up in the air, though. The box guns, considering how overcosted it was on the red side, I think did pretty good. Let me, let me get the costs a little bit, like, back down to kind of where they should be. And I think we're gonna see that the super boxers won't really stand a chance. Like... We could even give them, like, almost double like this, and it's gonna be horrifying. There's gonna be so many boxing rings here. Look at this. This is insane. Oh, there's boxing rings everywhere. There, everyone got caught inside of a boxing ring. Every single person. A few of them managed to get out. Right here, you can see a couple of super boxers over here. Just kind of banging on the window like, Let me out, you bastards! This is bullshit! There we go. Couple more boxing rings. Um, I don't know. I think that the super boxers may have it because there's still several of them left and there's only what maybe two of the box guns left oh yeah oh yeah these guys have broken through they should do just fine oh right there a couple more guys just got tied up this little little crappy boxers taking them out oh wow look at that there was only two super boxers left wow the box guns do pretty damn good then so those are not bad units at all Anyway, that was just a couple more battles, testing things up. We wanted to stay over here in Scotland so there wasn't all kinds of, like, crazy cubes getting in the way that would kind of make things unfair. Not that I made all of the matches very fair, but I did want to see how a lot of different things react to it. I always love seeing your guys' suggestions, too, so make sure to kind of keep those coming. Um, other than that, hope you're enjoying all these new units that they're coming out with. I, I really want to see a lot of these new units coming in, especially that harpoon guy. That was the weirdest physics I have ever seen when it comes to fighting in this game. Just bodies getting turned into, like, ultra stretchy taffy. I don't even know what happened. Hope you're enjoying Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. Until the next time, stay foxy and much love.